Hi guys, my name is Emily. If you watch this channel, you know that I read a lot of fantasy, I read a lot of children's literature and YA literature because that's kind of where my research interests are at, but I also do like my nonfiction to support those readings. Here are some nonfiction texts that I really, really, really want to read. The first one I have here is Stephen King's On Writing. Obviously, I'm a Stephen King fan, and I have heard great things about this. As somebody who's sort of interested in writing, I have a novel idea. It would be nice to see how some of my favorite writers write. So this, highly anticipated, and it's definitely on my list of things to read this year. Like, I've actually set it aside, pulled it from my shelf of unread books, and I'm like, you need to, you need to see this all the time so that you're thinking about it, so that you're gonna read it. The next book I have here, you will have seen all over social media. I believe I heard Lena Norms talk about it first from Just Kiss My Frog. This is Why I'm No Longer Talking to White People About Race by Rennie Edo Lodge, and I think it's important to think about race, to think about whiteness as a social construct, to think about racism, to think through all of these systemic ways that we are shitty in order to be better, in order to be a good ally. We need to understand. So, from what I've heard, this is fantastic, so I'm excited for this. The next book I have here, I don't know what I've done with the dust jacket, but it is Born a Crime by Noah Trevor. So this I borrowed from my partner. He really enjoyed it, and he wants to talk about it with me, so I have to read it. And I have had it in my possession for too many months now, so uh, I have to read it soon so we can talk about it. Did I say Noah Trevor? It's Trevor Noah. The next book I have here, I picked up during my master's thesis because it sounded awesome. So this is The Tough Guide to Fantasyland by Diana Wynne-Jones. So this is a sort of parody guide that really pokes fun at genre tropes, and I stumbled across it mentioned somewhere in my research for my MA thesis, and I was like, I need this, and then I ordered it, used, and it took a while to ship, and then by the time it showed up, I was in a different phase of like writing and reading, and I never got to it, so I want to get to it now. Similar thing, I was doing some research recently and I read a fantastic MA dissertation and that person cited this book, Why Are Critics Afraid of Dragons? Understanding Genre Fantasy by Kim Selling. So this takes a look at why academia has largely avoided fantasy literature, when fantasy literature is the literature of subversion, it has a lot of potential, we see some really progressive feminist things happening, we also see some pretty like static, heteronormative things happening in the genre, but all of that is worth talking about, it's worth analyzing, it's worth using an accessible genre to talk to people about these larger systemic issues, so why are academics avoiding it? I'm hoping that Kim Selling will have the answers to these questions and just, this is my area of research, this is my area of interest, so I'm excited. The next book I have here I ordered during my MA thesis and then never got to it because Again, I ran out of time. And this is The Cambridge Companion to Fantasy Literature, edited by Edward James and Farrah Mendelssohn. So this is, again, just looking at fantasy literature, things in fantasy literature, sort of the history of fantasy literature, and I feel like I got a lot of that from the other Farrah Mendelssohn book that I read and I didn't have time to read both, so I picked the one that interested me more, because again, I ordered these and then by the time they arrived, I had to assess, right? I'm still interested in this genre and I really think I should read it, especially as I think about transitioning from the Dark Tower series into my MA thesis series. It'll be really nice to refamiliarize myself with a lot of the research. Gotta read this guy. I honestly have no idea why or when I picked this up, but this is Indistinguishable from Magic by Catherine M. Valenti. It's more than 60 essays by Valenti. Quote, studies the fantasy genre's inner clockwork to better comprehend its infatuation with medievalism, considers the undervalued importance of the laundry machine to women's rights and locales as wide-ranging as Japan and the steampunk genre, and comes to understand that so much of shaping fantasy work is about making puppets seem real and sympathetic, otherwise you're just playing with dolls. Sean McGuire does the introduction, Sean McGuire wrote Every Heart a Doorway, Catherine M. Valenti wrote um, The Girl Who Circumnavigated 
fairyland and the ship of her own making. So you have fantasy authors thinking about the genre that they write in, which I find fascinating. I have no idea where I heard about this. I bought it and when I read the back of it, I'm like, this is really cool. I need all fantasy authors to sort of get self-reflexive about their genre. I'm really, really excited. So again, I'm not a person that tends to read a lot of non-fiction. I'm mostly fiction-based. I feel like it's important to keep reading the non-fiction and these are the non-fiction that I am most excited about, most passionate about. How many are there? Three, six, seven. Seven. I can probably manage one a month for the next little bit. That might be a good goal. Let me know in the comments down below if you like reading nonfiction. Is that a thing that you do almost exclusively? Are you more of a fiction person? And what sorts of nonfiction do you like to read? A lot of these are kind of academic, but that that's kind of where I'm at. But like, are you more like history, biography? self-help. Let me know. If you've read any of these guys that I talked about today, let me know your thoughts on those too. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you again soon. Bye!